Welcome to Fringe Pop 321, the show that believes the world is stranger than we think, but thinking should not be strange. The Bible is an ancient, fascinating book. It's good fodder for this show in many ways since it's got some pretty strange things in it. For instance, in Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, John writes this, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not. I am the first and the last, and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. Later, Jesus says in the same book, the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The first and last talk is our point of interest for this episode of Fringe Pop. It goes with Alpha and Omega, the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. Now in the Hebrew alphabet, the first and last letters are Aleph and Tav. Believe it or not, some people think that when those two letters, the Aleph and the Tav, appear in the Hebrew Old Testament, this is long before we had a New Testament, when they appear together, that they are an encrypted way of referring to Jesus long before Jesus was born of Mary. Are these two letters, the Aleph and the Tav, a secret Jesus code? Well, let's find out. To understand the claim that Jesus is mysteriously encoded in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, you need to understand and remember that the first and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet are Aleph and Tav. Aleph is the first letter, Tav is the last letter. Here's a familiar verse that supposedly encodes Jesus. This is Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you see Jesus in there? Well, of course not. We're looking at English. But the argument is, is that he's secretly encrypted in the Hebrew text. Now let's see how someone would think that. What you're looking at here is the Hebrew of Genesis 1.1. Hebrew is read right to left. And on the top line, you have the Hebrew, and underneath it, you have English words that correspond to the Hebrew words. Now, if you look closely at this, let's start with the top line, and we move right to left. We get to the end of the top line, and there are two little letters in Hebrew that have no English underneath them. And if we continue on line two, again, right to left, there's a gap between the heavens and the earth. Do you see Jesus now? Well, believe it or not, some would say you're looking right at him. I've circled the two occurrences of Aleph and Tav in Genesis 1-1 in Hebrew. And yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. The Aleph and the Tav are where the gaps were. Look at the top line, go to the end, reading right to left. There's nothing underneath the Aleph and the Tav. And in line two, below it, moving right to left, where the gap is, there's nothing underneath the Aleph and the Tav. The Aleph and the Tav, the Hebrew version of Alpha and Omega, the first and the last letter, this refers to Jesus. And so what we have here is an encrypted reference to Jesus, the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, the Aleph and the Tav. Just to summarize the idea again, the notion that we're talking about here is that in the Hebrew text of the Old Testament, these two letters, the Aleph and the Tav, which are the first and the last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And let that phrase fix in your mind, the first and the last. Jesus said, I am the first and the last. That these two letters, Aleph and Tav, signify, they encrypt their secret references to Jesus himself in the Hebrew Old Testament. But you don't know that because they are left untranslated. 
Now, if you go out into the internet, you're going to hear things and read things like, oh, these two letters are so mysterious. Scholars are so flummoxed. They just don't know what to do with the Aleph and the Tav. They're untranslatable. They're so mystical. And we know what the truth is, that they really encrypt Jesus, but scholars are just you know, totally bewildered as to what to do with the Aleph and the Tav. That claim is simply not true. The Aleph and the Tav is a very well-known feature of the Hebrew text and, frankly, Hebrew grammar. It has a grammatical role to play. It has nothing to do with Jesus. It is, in fact, just a particle that marks a particular grammatical function in a sentence. That's all the Aleph and the Tav are. Now that might sound light years away from the claim that we really have a secret encoded Jesus here, and I'll admit that it is. But it's actually very, very easy to demonstrate. The letters Aleph and Tav in Genesis 1-1 are not a mystery to translators, nor to anyone else who can read Biblical Hebrew. They are not the encrypted Jesus. What you see on your screen is Logos Bible software. I have a tool called the ESV Reverse Interlinear open to Genesis 1-1. I have the word heavens from the phrase the heavens and earth selected. You'll notice that before the word the heavens there is a dot. That's because the ESV did not translate the two-letter combination Aleph Tav. One of the information lines in the Reverse Interlinear is the morph line. It stands for morphology, which is grammatical information like part of speech. Our Aleph Tav combination is abbreviated PO, preposition object marker. That's because that's what the Aleph Tav is. It's no mystery. As any biblical Hebrew grammar will explain, the Aleph and Tav combination is either a grammatical particle that marks the direct object the accusative in a sentence or a preposition. The former is the explanation for Genesis 1.1. The Aleph and Tav mark the heavens and earth as the object of the verb created in the sentence. The two letters are not translated because they have a grammatical function only. They are not supposed to be translated. If I run a search on the Aleph Tav particle, the direct object marker. We discover that it occurs nearly 11,000 times in the Hebrew Bible. It's very well known to Hebrew scholars and translators. Notice how the English translation, the ESV here, shows a dot. Again, because the Aleph and Tav are not supposed to be translated. They just mark the direct object. We can also turn to some important Biblical Hebrew reference grammars. This is the Grammar of Biblical Hebrew by Juan and Moraoka. It's a leading reference grammar for Biblical Hebrew. It notes matter-of-factly that the Aleph Tav is an accusative marker. The word accusative refers to the direct object of a verb. The Hebrew reference grammar by Gesenius informs us of the same thing. The accusative is marked by the Aleph Tav particle. Hebrew grammarians and translators know exactly what the Aleph Tav is. There is absolutely no mystery. But even more problematic for those who want Aleph Tav to be an encrypted reference to Jesus, secretly embedded in the Hebrew text by God, the same particle is used in other Semitic languages the language family in which Biblical Hebrew belongs. This means that pagan texts have the Aleph Tav. It would be absurd to think that pagan texts encrypt Jesus. There's no point to such an idea, and it's wrong anyway. The particle serves the same function in other Semitic languages. It marks the direct object in a sentence or serves as a preposition. Here's a search for all the occurrences of the Aleph Tav in Hebrew and Canaanite inscriptions. These are texts outside the Bible and in the case of Canaanite languages in the texts of people the Old Testament would consider pagan. 
The Aleph Tav particle occurs 73 times in this database, which I helped to create. A specific example comes from the Misha Stella, also known as the Moabite Stone. Part of the sixth line of the inscription reads, I will also oppress Moab. If we go back up to the primary Moabite text and hover over the Aleph Tav before Moab, you'll see that it's marked in the database as an accusative particle, a particle that marks the direct object. In this case, it marks Moab, which is the direct object of the verb oppress. Again, the point is that Aleph Tav is not a code for Jesus. It's a grammatical particle that is well known to Hebrew scholars and translators. So what did we learn from all this? Well, in simplest form, the Aleph Tav has nothing to do with Jesus. This is not a two-letter code that encrypts the reference to Jesus in the Hebrew Bible. It wasn't put there by God to tell us about Jesus in an ancient Hebrew text. It's actually, as we saw, a common feature of not only Hebrew, but Hebrew outside the Bible and pagan Canaanite languages, languages like Moabite, Phoenician, Ammonite, Ekronite, all of those ites. They all do the same thing. They mark their direct object with an aleph and a tav word or particle. So this has nothing to do with Jesus. There's nothing mysterious here. So we need to, again, as we like to say here on Fringe Pop, think about the primary texts. We need to get our thinking from what languages actually do and what texts actually say, rather than inventing ideas that sound kind of neat, but they have no basis in reality. Thanks again for watching Fringe Pop. Please visit our website for show notes, resources, and references. And keep watching, because what you know may not be so.